The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 119, Nasdaq up 44, S&P's up 14 and a half. Gold contract up a buck ninety, trading at fifteen thirteen an ounce. You get silver up eight cents, eighteen dollars fourteen cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up seventy eight cents, fifty six dollars ninety seven cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year down ten ticks, one twenty nine twenty two. The thirty year off thirty, almost two, almost one point at one fifty nine twenty one. And king dollar, king dollar up one hundred twenty five ticks, trading ninety seven three sixty four. The euro is at one eleven. The yen is at 108 and a half, and the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. We're kicking into November. Bottom line, market's kicking into new highs. Why not, man? Continuation <laughs> of last week. And this continuation, you know, uh, of course, you know, you, you had our markets up on Friday. Uh, bottom line, we went right over to Asia, right over to Europe, and right back to us right now. So, well, bottom line is that, yes, you, you definitely have a higher price. There's divergence. Inside the S&P, we had some volume. Inside the NASDAQ as well as the NDX 100, you had a contraction of volume. Um, news out here today, Under Armour would be uh, the, the, the right up. The about a 15% haircut from yeah. Friday's close. And you know what the thing that's amazing about this story, actually, is that this, they disclosed it today, but this has been going on for two years. Let's bring everybody up to speed what story yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, so you got Under Armour, folks, is... Well, Accounting. Would it be... In, yeah, accounting probe, right? Yes, By no, the definitely. SEC, right? Yeah, talking yeah. about their accounting. I mean, right. there's nothing more uh, important than right. the, the numbers you're putting out to shareholders representing the facts. So Under Armour shares plunging after the company disclosed that federal sh federal officials have been probing its accounting practices for more than two years. Two years. Yeah, I wonder what uh, the legal requirements I are know. for such a probe and reporting that to shareholders and why that is now made available today. So right. the, the athletic company also lowering its full year revenue forecast on Monday, but raised some other projections after posting solid third quarter results. And uh, on Sunday, spurred by a report by the Wall Street Journal, the company said it's cooperating with investigations by the U.S. SEC and the U.S. Department of Justice and doesn't think it's done anything wrong. And that's where I guess you would. So the company began responding in July of 17. Uh, more than two years ago to request for documents and information relating primarily to its accounting practices and related disclosures. And the company firmly believes that its accounting practices and disclosures were appropriate. That's what they said in their statement. So, yeah, you got investigators, though, from, I mean, you, when you add Justice Department in there on top of SEC. <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah. Um, and that's on the heels of the CEO and founder just right. uh, announcing that he was stepping down yeah. as well. And so that you, adds a little bit more oh, uh, speculation when no you doubt. get into that. So he, he is, is going after this uh, swing low of fifteen fifteen. You hit fifteen eighty eight. We'll see what this shakes out. You know they should have some support of fourteen eighty seven. But when you have, I, I do that whole thing about two years. Just I have a hard time wrapping my head around that because that's material. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it, you know, I wonder somehow, if they'll, somehow they got away with not disclosing. There'll it, be but, some more articles written about yeah. it, I'm sure. And then uh, Big Mac, Big Mac. Speaking of CEOs yeah, that are out, right? That's uh, he he's out. You got a consensual relationship. Consensual. Bottom, let's get that word out there. Bottom too. line is that uh, no, it's against the know. terms, man, of your employment. You know, I mean, you can think what you want, but when the terms are laid out ahead of time. Um, and it's tough to feel bad for that situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, the CEO, he's divorced, he's single. It's not even right. a, 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 as scandalous as right. things most of the time get when this. Um, yeah. But the board didn't want the CEO having relationships with people underneath him in a corporate structure like that. And you have to understand how that might be something that the board wants to keep intact for the benefit of the long term growth of the company. It comes out that he was having a consensual relationship with an employee. And. Um, the board said no. There's no. There's no yeah. ifs, ands, or buts around it, man. But yeah, as you're looking at right now, I mean, the stock uh, basically doubled yeah. in his tenure, and uh, he's regarded as one of the best CEOs in the business. And the market really not hitting it that bad, all things considered, right? And you know, the 
They got a new CEO in there who was kind of right under him right. in McDonald's. And There's, I just said a little bit earlier when we were talking, they got a deep bench. They that's, do, that's, and they have a deep experience bench. You hey, know. the Patriots lost. I saw last night, man. Oh no more undefeated season. Um, pretty remarkable that the one team left that's undefeated in the NFL, San Francisco 49ers, okay. their quarterback, Garoppolo, who was our backup quarterback at one point. If you remember that, really? when, when Brady was out that one year, I think that's when he got suspended. Garoppolo filled in, did a great job. And Garoppolo earned himself a whopper of a contract to wow. bring it back to fast food. And um, so they are the only undefeated team left. Interesting week in the NFL for sure. And the Bucs, man, lost a, a close one to the Seahawks, I believe, in a last minute. Uh, they were close, man. In the last as, minute. As oh, is usually God. the case. Pretty close, but no cigar. So, oil. Let's take a look at this oil market. We get Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're going to basically go out to market. Uh, they're not going out to our market. No, well, no, they're not. And so you get oil up this morning, fifty six ninety five. You get two hundred and seventy one thousand contracts. Let's look at this thing. Yeah. So you got Aramco going to Riyadh, right? The uh, yeah. index over there, and you know, just to keep it in context, man, they were originally going to pump out five percent of their equity in international markets. They're now going to push out, you know, three percent in a in a foreign market, which much much less reporting standards. Um, buyer beware extremely. Oh, I, I wouldn't touch that thing. Yeah, there's, there's and no. the the valuations. I heard Goldman was saying they might be worth 2.2, 2.3 trillion. And then you had I forget what company might have been Bank of America, but a legitimate big analyst yes. saying maybe as low as 1.2 trillion. I mean, this sounds like a WeWork type. You know, where I it's agree. like maybe it's worth 2.4 trillion, and an analyst is saying maybe it's worth 1.2. Well, then maybe it's worth $600 billion. I don't know, you know, and why would you believe anything I, and, they push out when it's a state-owned Saudi Arabia oil? Um, I mean, this is the same country to, to bring things to yeah. reality that just basically killed a U.S. resident. Yeah. On, you know, right. oh, totally. it's, it's yeah. so buyer beware, to, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm really surprised that they're, they're doing it this quick after we work because it's like, okay, if you, you know, the, the broker-dealer community, the banking community, they make a percentage of, what is going to get pushed out. Yes. So, of course, they're going to try to justify as high as they can get. Yes. It's just amazing that to me that people would actually I agree. So, well, we'll see. I we'll agree. See. We'll see where it shakes out. And at least some of the people might be protected because it's at least not on the NASDAQ, not on the NYSE, whereas most people won't be buying an equity that's trading over in the Riyadh uh, exchange or right. whatnot. But right. still, man, it's people are going to get hurt if they buy it and they lose their money. <laughs> when you have a company like Goldman out there saying it's worth more than two trillion dollars and they're very biased by that recommendation yeah yeah so we'll see where this oil market wants to go this is kind of interesting actually i mean it's like you know are they pumping the oil market up at the same time yeah um oh totally you know because you're over the swing point now i mean that's saying 58 well saying 58 19 is game that's the bottom of the downdraft out here that was uh well actually it was an updraft and the next day was the downdraft that was uh, September 16th. And that was the attack on those Saudi oil fields. Oh, that's right. Of course. Come on. Look at that that's gap. Right. Come that's on. That's right. That's right. Okay. So yeah. that's going to be a big number there. Yes. That's going to definitely be a big number. Oh, the, man. Um, and the, oh. Dollar, the dollar is basically still flat out here. Up 118, uh, 97, 357. That's looking for lower price. Dow, Dow's up 121, Nasdaq's up 42, S&P's up 14 and a half. Stay right there, folks. Time and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 115. Nasdaq is up 43. S&Ps are up 15. And if we stay with the uh, Aramco uh, IPO yeah. for a second. We weren't even searching for the story, but no, it's up there and it's pretty, interesting nonetheless, yeah. right? So they're pulling out all the stops to ensure success for the IPO after the Crown Prince finally decided to offer shares. The kingdom cut taxes on the company for a third time, revealed incentives for investors not to sell, and is considered boosting dividends further Yet the Saudi government's already conceded the company probably isn't worth the $2 trillion valuation they've long advocated. Well, somebody should tell Goldman Sachs that as they're out there pushing $2 plus trillion. Um, and just to keep in mind, again, you know, there's probably not a lot of investors, I think, who are plowing money into this, even out there listening, thankfully. But when you have a state-owned oil company, right, they can tweak everything in terms of they can shift. So let's say the company's making Boku bucks, all right? You right. invest in the company. They're just crushing it. Well, the state oil, the state decides to just tax the oil company greater, right? And they take all the profits from the company, and meanwhile, it's still state owned. So it's just kind of shifting it from one bucket to the next, and all they're doing is taking the money from investors in the company to push it back to the state. Meanwhile, the state owns the company; the state gets the taxes, so they're lowering well, all the and, taxes and, ahead of the IPO. But then they could just raise them back up the moment that the IPO is pushed out to the sure. public. And if you want, if depending on how long or short your memory is, folks, okay, you got to remember that the next. Paragraph there. Aramco published uh, a so-called intention to float on Sunday, the most dramatic change to the Saudi oil industry since the company was nationalized in the 1970s. <laughs> yep. And that's when the kingdom took it over. Sure. You know, so the bottom line is that. And here's where. So Saudi Arabia is aiming for a valuation of 1.6 to 1.8 trillion. Goldman Sachs told investors it's worth 1.6 to 2.3. What, what, is, what is that? You know, I mean, seriously, <laughs> Bank of America, another top bank in the deal, had a bottom range set at 1.2. BNP Paribas looked at 1.42. Um, bank of America is still another top bank in the deal, and oh, they're yeah. still saying 1.2. Right. So be skeptical of even that. Um, you can see what's happening, they're, but they're employing 20 banks, folks, on its IPO. So they're splitting. They're trying to get. Every, I'd say every they get everybody in their pocket. There. Exactly. Exactly. So everybody's right. got a bias as they push this yeah. thing out. Yeah. And they got to figure out, they got to get to a price that they can just push so much out. And yeah. If it's only 3%, that's, that, I don't think that's going to be hard for 20 banks to basically get clients. Right. right. 
um, mm. you know, but good luck in a year or so. Exactly. If, no, if, I, where's that it, price going to no be, doubt, right? right? And there, so they had a net income last year of 111 billion, most profitable company of any corporation, more than Ac Apple, Google, um, and Exxon combined. But the company's pledged to pay a minimum of 75 billion in dividends. What happens in a downturn? What happens if they decide to say, you know what, we're going to raise the taxes on that company to 85 percent on an annual basis because the state needs the money from the state-owned oil company? And I'd, I'd question the as aspect of them going public, period. I agree, yeah. Because of the fact that, okay, if you're in a great business, folks, okay, and you have plenty of money. Which, which they do, Which right? they do. Yeah. Why are you basically saying, okay, you can have some money public, right? That's just yeah. kind of not how it goes. And we can see, you know, I mean, there's there's alternates to oil right now. And yeah, it's alternatives. chipping away, yeah. little by little. I mean, most of the time you go public because you don't have the capital required right. to grow the business at the right. rate that you can grow it at. Um, Saudi Arabia has had a private company that says from 1970, you're talking about yes. 50 years, right. seems like they've had their infrastructure built out. They're just selling it off because they think it might be great to diversify. Right. Well, guess what? You don't diversify if you have the best company out there, no. right? You keep your share. You pull, a, you pull a Bezos or a Bill Gates and you hold one company, one share for the life of your life and yeah. you never sell it if you, if you can avoid it. There's no doubt. Yeah. Bonds. Let's go take a look at the bond market. So. Last week, folks, bonds caught a bid, low top side. We're pulling back today, and guess what? It's going to be on light volume. I mean, it, this, is, this is just amazing to me that, you know, you're at all-time highs. We're going into 2.2 million contracts. We've only done 631. So, you know, this could definitely do 1.5, 1.6, something like that. But this is so unusual, man, that you're at all-time highs. Bonds will not budge, um, you know. Can we pull up the 10 year yields? Yeah. So just I'll 10. Do it this way. Yeah. There we go. And you're going to see. I wanted to see a chart here. We're sitting at 1.768%. Yeah. And yeah, so what was that recent pink? I was just curious. And that was kind of right as we were coming into the Fed 1.84. We, uh, we pulled back pretty hard to 1.76. That's on. Thursday and then Friday it continued as the market just chugged higher to 1.67. We're back at about 1.76. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's also so unusual there, the Fed comes out, says, okay, we're going to stay, you know, neutral for a bit. Yeah. And the bond market decides, no, I'm going lower. I'm going lower on yield, higher on price. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, the lower on yield, higher on price. So we'll see where this whole thing shakes Can out. I, but, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Wait, yeah. What, say that to lower it. Lower on yield? Higher on price, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. See, I, this is confusing, but no, that's, the, not, that's the Fed day, 1.85. Right. We went down to 1.66 but because we yeah. only have the yield up there. If we turn right. around and put the, the bond up there, you're going to see that as soon as the Fed came out, the bottom line is that you'd think you'd go the opposite way. Well, we went from 129 up, up to 130.15. That's higher in price, lower in yield. Oh, that's what I meant. That's yeah, it. Okay, that's right. who you lost. Me. It was the other okay. way. Okay, okay. yeah. Okay. Right. Higher in price, lower in yields. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's they're just still buying it, and you know, bottom line is that we'll see uh, how the rest of this shakes out. Sure. You know, no, I agree. It's, I do. It's it's wild. I mean, it sure is. It absolutely is. How about Berkshire? We had their earnings oh, over yeah. the weekend. He's got so much cash, man. I think he's up to 128 billion now, or something. Free cash. That's problem. He's looking for better deals than he can find, but the right. market okay with that. Up about two bucks. It's almost a full percent. Yeah. So let's see. Record quarter. Oh yeah. Now watch this. This is pretty cool as to how this works too. Uh, so Kraft. Kraft has been a disaster for Berkshire Hathaway. Now that being said, what what you have is this. Like almost a third of the jump in Berkshire's third quarter earnings came from finally recording its share of the package food giant's 2019 result. They had a gain of 467 million. Yeah, Be and that's yeah. They delayed reporting right the first half results amid regulatory probes. Right. right. And so what has happened, folks, in his investment is that because it's an equity, he had a mock to market it this every earnings. Okay. So he's been marking market this down forever. I mean, yeah, 2.7 billion in 2018. Right. Yeah. Um, and then if we bring, does it say how much cash he has? I think it's 128 billion. It's it's a monster number, man. Um, and if we go to Kraft Heinz and look at it, you're going to see that this is still a mess. 
But what does happen, because he makes so much money on other things, KHC. Can ride it out. It, that, it yeah. looks like, I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is that he has rode this out. <coughs> if you look Excuse at this me. chart, and, you know, chart, Man, $93, you know, down to Excuse 24 me. But on Warren's Excuse books, me. that's already written off. Yes, right. So now any upside yeah. comes into the upside of it. Yeah. You know? It's, and like we always say, the market hates uncertainty. So the fact that maybe that might be over, those regulatory probes they couldn't even bring into their reporting now they have a number that they can put on it they're not as worried about yeah. the woes of uncertainty stay right there folks tommy and i are coming right back our phone number is 877-927-6648 dow's up 130 nasdaq's up 48 s&p's up 16 and a half come right back folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 150. Nasdaq's up 52. S&P's up 17 and a half. Let's go inside the uh, NDX first and see the strength uh, inside that NDX. So we have uh, JD.com. That's a Japan, I mean, a China company. It's up 5.5%. Baidu's up 5.2%. So China's on little, the move. We got a little trade optimism out there yeah. for that deal, phase one deal, possibly. Yeah. Xilinx is up 4.4, and NetEase is up 4. Point another ADR. Another ADR, yep. Uh, taken away from it, Activision down 3.3. 3. 
Um, Verisk, maybe? Analytics? Yeah, down 1.1. 1. 1. What's happening to Lulu, man? Athleisure. What's they, they ain't buying enough $250 uh, yeah. yoga pants and, and T-shirts. 1.3%. And... Oh, look then at Netflix. that. Yeah. Okay, so... What's going on with Netflix? Oh, that, uh, we gotta, we got to talk about this for okay. a second, because this is going to get interesting. Okay. So Netflix is up $4.36. So... There's a big movie out that just came out that's getting um, The Irishman. Did, did you hear this? I did. Uh, who's that? De Niro, Scorsese, yeah. Yeah. right? Okay. So listen I... to this. This is amazing, actually. So no one would finance this movie. Okay. And Netflix ended up financing it. Okay. And then Netflix talked to the um, the big show houses, all the, okay. the big theaters, theaters. Right? Okay. And so what happens is that the theaters would never make a deal with any distributor unless the deal was that you wouldn't let, allow this to be on TV um, for approximately 90 to 120 days. Yeah, to wait that long. To That's, wait that yeah, long. Sure. Netflix wouldn't budge. Okay. Okay. So now the theater, now this, this turned into a huge hit. So now the theaters are complaining. Okay. So. so sorry, bring me back. Netflix would not budge? Would not or, budge. They uh, said. Listen, okay. we're going to allow you to have this in, in 30 days. If you want to see this in a big screen, at the clock started ticking last week. Okay. In 30 days, this is going to be on Netflix. Pretty cool. It, it, I got you. This is going to be on Netflix in 30 days. Pretty cool. And they just said, hey, listen, we're more concerned about um, our subscribers. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what you it's know, about for sure, um, right? And, you know, so now the, 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 the cool thing is, is that I, I, I wonder if, they're going to end up breaking records for 30 days. So as soon as I read that, I said, oh, that's pretty cool. I like to see it both ways. That's interesting. I saw somebody out there just uh, social media saying they had seen it and then saying it'll probably be on Netflix in like 30 days. And I thought they were being sarcastic. You know, saying right. everything hits the market in no time nowadays. Right. But no, I guess that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. 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 And it, we'll it, find the article. I was flying around a little bit. Yeah. Um, we'll find the article. But yeah. And that's where... The whole world is going, man. I know it's not yet. Remember how long it used to be where you see something in the a theater? Year. And then, yeah, it yeah. was a long time before it made it to VHS or something, right. right? Now it's in the theater. Then maybe it's on demand on your cable provider or something yeah. where you got to pay $6. Even now when you pull up the on demand, they have the service where it's like uh, $15 you can watch them ahead yes. of time, right? So right. they don't mind. They'll, they'll give you the price of a theater ticket if you want to get it early. Right. It seems like it's just a race to the faster to get there. So that right. would make sense. Yeah. Pretty cool. If, and it's wild. Yeah. If we go into uh, the Dow Industrial Strength versus the Weakness, folks, uh, we'll look at the point ones versus the percentage. So, yeah, CVA. Um, Chevron, huh? Chevron. Chevron's uh, putting uh, 28 positive points. Boeing, 25. 3M, 18. Goldman, 14. Taking away from it, uh, Big Mac, minus 32. Proctor, minus 13. CVX. Let me go look at this, baby. Look at that move, man. It's $4.17. So what's happening here? This is today. And we're back to the weekend, 11-3. Yeah. So, I mean, I had to see what the... Oh, maybe it was that... Okay. I mean... I think I saw. Maybe it has to do with uh, this one to buy... Part of there? Are they selling off maybe a portion to buy USP or their stake in an oh, oil field in I, Azerbaijan? Okay. Um, yeah. 1.57 billion. That'll so just, do it. Just kind of cashing in, That'll taking the cash yeah. and, and that market getting applied. So buying Chevron's not 10% stake, almost 9.57% stake in the oil field, plus an 8.9% stake in another pipeline known as BTC that yeah. leads to the Mediterranean port of. That cayenne, cayenne, yeah. That's always nice to get some cash, man. Yeah, and talk you, about relieving uncertainty, right? Yeah. You just basically sell off your assets, yeah. And, you know, you're taking a little swing. Quite a pop. Out, taking it with volume, so you can expect higher price to, to still get out there. And in this day and age, and what's also going to happen with this, um, they start with the Saudi Aramco IPO, it's going to be basically... You know, if you like the oil market, you gotta you gotta look at like, okay, you know, what's Exxon trading at, and what is Chevron trading at? Now, those are bigger, but okay, yep. Exxon, you know, that's a big PE actually. Is that a forward PE? When you say bigger than what? Bigger uh, all than, around. They, I mean, than Saudi Aramco or what? Do you, uh, bigger uh, than what? Saudi Aramco is much bigger than the, both of these companies, but 
it, it's still going to be like, what is what is it, P.E.? Sure, you know definitely. I mean? Oh, That doesn't look right, right? No, I think that's that's definitely right. Okay, so yeah. expect... I mean, this is not a growth company. No, you know, that's I mean, a big P.E., that's all I'm saying. Oh, it's too big. It could be, yeah, yeah. Tw yeah 25. Right. I thought you were saying it could be bigger. No, no, I agree. No. I agree. I mean, look, it's... Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, Exxon's probably not right there. Chevron is saying... Trailing yeah. PE six point six, forward PE about eighteen. Still a lot of money for, you know, but they're they're paying a three point nine per six dividend dividend right now. Yeah, almost, almost 4, four percent. Almost four percent. Yeah. At this price, and then Exxon is paying. Look at that. Exxon's paying four point nine two percent. Okay. You know, and yeah. that, that's big numbers, right? Certainly, what you're going to be looking for inside <coughs> that uh, IPO is that what is going to be the dividends? Because you know, oh, for sure, they don't have growth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if we go overseas and we take a look at overseas, what you'll see is that right across the world last night, folks, um, you had some uh, action. Green on the board. Yeah. The only thing I saw was the Nikkei there in the red. Yeah. So. Nikkei down three tenths of a percent. Hang Seng was up one point six. Shanghai five eighths. Okay. Nothing heavy there. Now next, uh, I think it's November eleventh. That's going to be Singles Day. So Singles uh, Day over in China. Yeah. Right. That's the largest. Uh, that's like their Black Friday. Right. But it's much Cyber bigger. Monday. I was going to say yeah, all combined exactly. into one times ten. Exactly. So if we take a look at the Europe, Europe's up about 1.1 to 1.4 percent across the board. Yeah. Uh, the UK, uh, this saga continues, and we'll see where this is going to shake out. But you know, right now the bottom line is catching a bid. We take a look at the, that is quite a bid, man, isn't it? That's almost what two percent, yeah. right? When we yeah. take a look at the the pound. Pound's going sideways. Okay. Uh, Euro. Really sideways move too. Not much movement. They they both look to me like they they, they do want higher price. So we'll how's, see where that shakes out. How's Disney trading today? Oh, like, good keep old my, we, we had our Disney yeah. conversation. Um, our Netflix. Uh, yeah. One more. Not the. Um, no, we're gonna not the DIA. You got in there. Disney. Oh, yeah, Disney. DIS. Um. Because anytime I talk Netflix, man, I take a yeah. look at that Disney. Quite a pop, man, from one thirty to one thirty three yeah. over a couple days. Coming up to that price point, but still, you know, I mentioned it. If you're a long-term buyer, Disney, not a bad price, man. No. Um, yep. I good. mean, it looks far removed from 2011, but boy, oh boy, I just see them being a juggernaut. And Five bucks a month or something for and, their and, and service. When we, when we come back, we'll, I'll, I'll bring up Disney because I want to see if they break out because they're growing by leaps and bounds in China. You know? Okay. I mean, I'm just curious whether they break it out. Stay Thank right you. there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 142. Nasdaq's up 46. S&P's up 16. Let's go to Dave in Boston. Dave, what's going on, brother? Gentlemen, good morning. How you doing? Morning, Great, Dave. Man, yourself? I uh, just left you up out of the, the woods back on Tuesday. I was dealing in the upper 80s, and today I'm looking at snow frost on pumpkins. How do you love it? <laughs> snow frost? Really? November. Wow. Oh, November. well, it's just frost. I mean, it's I'm just, with it. Uh, no, I know. That's pretty intense. It's that time of year. You know what it's like. It is. I had a friend uh, that got married at the aquarium, actually. I think it was Saturday or Sunday, and they said they got 50 degrees and some sun. I heard it had been raining a lot, but you guys, hopefully you guys get some good weather up there. They lucked out with getting a little yeah. decent weather on uh, their wedding at the I was like Sweet. New England Aquarium. Well, That's a cool spot, of yeah. course. It is. It is a nice place. It's a, it's a beautiful time of year right now. Yeah. Um, you know how it all goes. Yeah. Um, I had a question for you regarding gold. Um, I am looking at, uh, well, from the GLD, the GDX. I wanted to ask you specifically, Tom, about Hominy, though. Um, with the dollar uh, looking at declining, as far as a percentage move, you're the best one to ask on this. How would your take be on that as a shot versus the uh, as opposed to moving with gold? You mean shot harmony? Yeah, it's only three dollars stock though. Right, but I mean, it's, uh, I mean, how much a percentage move? So what, watch what happens here. So I, I, I get, I get, I get the understanding of it because if the dollar. Basically, goes goes into lower price. What what is going to end up happening is that the rand, okay, will get stronger versus what it was. Okay. That being said, though, anything like a, we're, we're at fourteen and a half rand to one U.S. dollar right now. Anything like over ten or eleven is like these companies still make money hand over fist. Okay. And they have okay. They have millions of ounces of gold. I mean, what happens is this: is that they got. Like, let's say a good gold mine it takes 10 tons of gold for, like, one ton, one ounce of gold. 10 tons versus one ounce, right? They probably have yeah. to take 30 tons for one ounce. The differential is that there's millions of them there, even though they're, they're you know, the, mile, the mines are, like, you know, two or three miles deep. So okay. the, 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 correlation, right, so the correlation goes right to... They got 32,000 employees. They still get paid with U.S. dollars for their gold, and they're basically, you know, paying in rand. And yeah. if you take a look at this rand, you're going to see the rand is still so dramatically weak compared to a, a long-term aspect of it. I mean, you know, this is pretty intense, man. I mean, you know, the rand was trading at, what, $8, 8 to 1 in 2010. When we were at 2011, it was all-time highs. Where's 2011? Let's see. No, nope, back it up. Back it up, right there. Look at that. We were at six point nine rand to one U.S. dollar. That run from twenty eleven to twenty fifteen was just remarkable. Yeah, you know. So I wouldn't be basically <coughs> shot in harmony. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, so the like the junior miners or the GLT will be a better vehicle versus that notion of the uh, the dollar going going lower and um, going with it. So you're saying the the shot the GDX or the GLD is that? What no, 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 definitely not going going with the uh, like. Yeah, uh, GDX, just buying the miners or yeah. um, no, I, buying listen, the GLD. Yeah, I think right now we're at the cusp, meaning that we're at the cups. Yeah, if we if we pull this up, what you're going to see is that the metal market itself last week, okay, had GC. We, we broke that downtrend that we've been in. And, you know, you, you broke it with good volume. So now you get a shot and the... the yeah, that's right. And the the high I'm talking about is at fifteen sixty six. That's the September high. If we take a look at this, what you're going to see you know, is that you get a decisive break. We we broke it a week ago, two weeks ago Friday. We came right back topside. You come down with light volume, came behind, and that's saying that okay, it wants to make the run to that fifteen sixty six. And the equities did the same okay. thing. You know, the the equities had volume. The equities took a small swing point out. If you take a look at this, a lot of them took this small swing point out, and it did have volume on the takeout. Um, that's that's not well. I can show you the day that I'm looking at. This is the the swing point. So that was one point six. Uh, versus 1.4 in an uh, equal eagle. If we go to FNV, and then you get Franco Nevada that wants to go to all time highs. So you get Franco Nevada. Okay. That swing point was 96.96 at 474,000, and we took it out at 733. And this is the thing that's amazing, actually, to me, is that this is actually quiet. That was so close to highs. <laughs> You know, right. and, and some of these gold right. stocks. It, it really is because what we, what we what we normally used to is that you normally get a run. Do you know what I mean? And this has been a, just a chop, chop, chop. So, so yeah, what, and I mean, you're not hearing it. You're not hearing it off the off the top like you uh, will when gold puts in those big runs. It's not even close. You you will hear yeah. it once you break the high, but it's not even close. Yeah, no doubt. Right. Okay. Cooking, brother. Okay, guys. Have a great Thank one. Thank you. Have a great Have one. A you too, one. Dave. Thanks for calling, man. All right. See you guys. Bye. So let's get back to that Netflix deal because we found the story. I yeah, think, we were right? jumping around a little bit to uh, because it is remarkable. I was saying, you know, I've heard great things, as I mentioned. So the headline of this, the inside the fail deal that almost made the Irishman Netflix's first wide theatrical release. So the premise here that we just may have skipped over a little bit. So it's not out in theaters everywhere. Right. So it, it's it's out in just select theaters. It's probably not out in AMC, right? It's not out in the big that's houses. Right. And so that's what the big houses were arguing, that they wanted their terms, and this is, gets into some of the exact numbers. So the theater chain, look how close they were, all right? Theater chains were willing to let the movie have a 60-day exclusive theatrical window. Yeah. Lower than what they usually push for. So Netflix right. got them down 12 days. Right. Uh, but Netflix wanted a 45-day window, and they couldn't get in between that 45 and the 60 day deal. So nonetheless, uh, they've released the movie in a limited theatrical run yeah. in which theaters are getting the higher end of the ticket sale split and multiple sets. So this was the first. It's, it is, look at the ticket split up there. It's pretty cool. So AMC and Cineplex, right? Yeah. Uh, they're probably the ones that it's not at. But they, they were trying to get uh, 75, 25. And it looks like the way they're reading that, whoever did end up taking it. They're, they're, getting a, they're getting a good take. So let's see. AMC, the largest movie in the chain, and Cineplex, which has 1,600 theaters in Canada, were in talks with Netflix for months on showing the Martin Scorsese's gangster epic, according to the Times. Times reported that both chains were even willing to do something that many industry thought were unthinkable, shortening the exclusive theatrical release window for the movies to just 60 days before Netflix would be allowed to make the movie available for streaming. Industry-wide, it's usually 72 but the stock talk stalled because Netflix wouldn't go higher than 45. And um, that's not the whole story, I guess. That's where yeah. you go, though, right? Both sides weren't just negotiating days. They were trying to get a better deal, the theaters, than they normally get from Hollywood studios. And uh, usually studios get a 60-40 split, meaning theaters only make up 40%. We'll finish it up, man, because that's an interesting one. The industry is changing. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you are going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He's going to be riding the wave, the Chapman wave for subscribers. Uh, he's got an event coming up, folks, on November 19th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. for his subscribers. And it's real easy to be a subscriber. You come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. Two weeks from tomorrow, man. Wow. He'll be in there. Uh, November 19th, Tuesday, 5 to 6.30 p.m., 90-minute webinar. He's going to be going over a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and market outlook ahead for 2020. He's got some stock picks in there already, 15 to 30% intra-year winners. And by request from his subscribers, Basil's going to be reviewing many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis. That's going to include rhythm of price movement in all time frames, the practical application of moving averages, Arc and Cup, CW Notation. He's also going to be discussing sectors and stocks of importance going into 2020. And, of course, as always, that's going to be Arc. I know, man. It's, it's remarkable. So 90-minute webinar, of course, when you sign up, you gain access to the opening call. Great service. You should sign up. Check that out regardless. And you get a bunch of great archive webinars in there to check out. And so check it out. That's only in two weeks. You get a 30-day subscription 30-day money-back guarantee right. no matter what subscription you sign up for folks whether it's great education the month the six month the year 
If you plan on staying on, I encourage you to. Why not sign up for six months? You still get that 30-day option. That way you can lock in some savings when I imagine you'll stay on there for the opening call, man. And market-wise out here, the bottom line, you get a little fluctuation. Uh, the Dow up uh, 127, and NASDAQ up 38, S&P's up 14 and a half. And if we just take a look at this, you're going to see the, the S&P is just fluctuating about five points once it got up these uh, yeah, 15. Yeah, pretty tame yeah. so far. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we got Think of Swim coming up next. And I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Have a great one. Thanks, Thanks so. man. Bam! Look at him, folks.